guys, put your hands together for one, the only Eddie Del Sepe. My name is Eddie, but my mom gave me a really Latino name. My real name is actually Edmundo. That's my name. I've been called Eddie my whole life because Edmundo is one of those sexy Latin names that's very hard to live up to. You know what I'm saying? Eddie suits me. If someone told you Eddie's coming to the party, be like, hey, sounds a great guy. I'd love to meet him. Dude, if someone told you Edmundo's coming to the party, every guy here is like, look, I know who this guy is, but I'm pretty sure he's going to challenge one of us to dance, all right? He's going to show up with a silk shirt, slick hair, and start hitting on my mom, you know what I mean? Be like, hey, Edmundo, stop talking to my mom. He's like, okay, okay. Tell your mom, stop dressing so horny, you know? <laughs> You got a horny looking mom, man. <laughs> my dad was born and raised in Italy, and my mom is from South America. And I said that on stage one time, and a woman who I don't know came up to me, tapped me on the shoulder, and went, Hey. I go, Yeah. She goes, Ha! Nice mix. <laughs> You're a nice little mix. It was just a great way to make a grown man feel like a labradoodle, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I go, lady, they're all nice mixes. Is there such thing as a bad one? And then I found one. Dude, I met this white chick named Brittany whose mom was from Florida and her dad f was from Florida, so. <laughs> Yikes. Dude, I said it on stage one time, and a guy in a Dolphins jersey and a backwards camel hat goes, hey, I'm from Florida, and you're lucky I don't cut you. Like, wow. Story checks out. <laughs> Very on brand. See on the news, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm, uh, I'm not a good Latin person. I don't know how to speak Spanish. I don't know. Here's the thing about Latin people. They love their culture. You can always tell how Latin somebody is by how they react to me not knowing how to speak Spanish. I was at this Mexican restaurant, me and some friends. This older Mexican server looks at me and goes, hey, where are your parents from? I go, oh, my mom's from Peru. This dude lights up and goes, ah, habla espanol? I went, nah. And then he goes, you're a disgrace, man. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I looked at my friends and went, guys, this Mexican restaurant <laughs> is authentic. <laughs> this food's the real deal. These quesadillas are full of shame. You know? <laughs> There's a stereotype for Latin and Mediterranean men that they're hairy, you know? Guys, when it comes to body hair, you know what I'm talking about, you know? Every guy's different when it comes to body hair. I'm one of these guys, hardly any chest hair, but for some reason, a lot of leg hair, it goes from my feet to my belt line and just stops. <laughs> you know what that means? I could never go to the beach with a Speedo, it'd be weird. People look at me like, oh my God, is that a centaur? What the hell is that guy? I think his hooves have sandals. <laughs> Get that guy a flute. He's from Narnia. Every man in this room who comes to body hair, we're all like snowflakes, we're all different. I'm one of these guys. I have mounds of hair on my nipples here and here only. Why would I need that? That has no evolution purpose on any human being. No guy's ever been like, my torso is warm, but my nipples are freezing. I wish I had a couple hairy man coasters just to keep me warm at night. I need some boob beanies for this winter. That's the thing with nipples. On guys, same size every time. With ladies, you don't know what you're gonna get. They can be M&Ms, they can be personal pan pizzas. You have no clue. <laughs> you never see a guy with a really big areola. You don't see that guy. He doesn't exist. He's an anomaly, you know what I mean? Imagine you had a buddy like that, takes off his shirt, you're like, oh my God. You look like a set of turntables. <laughs> Is that why you call me DJ? Is it my ones and twos? <laughs> oh, man. I was uh, home recently to visit my family. Does anyone here have a family? Anybody have a family here? Yeah? 
No? Not all of you clapping, you're just drunk orphans? What? I don't need them. <laughs> Dude, I have a really unique family, one really rare quality. I'm a stand-up comedian. I've got two brothers back home, both in their 30s, both still live at home, both are unemployed. Dude, do you know how rare it is for a mother to be like, one of my sons tells jokes and has two roommates? <laughs> Whew, and we're proud, all right? <laughs> I can't make this up. One of my brothers back home got arrested for selling MDMA to a cop. <laughs> I told a buddy this, who's a huge pothead. Dude, his follow-up question was amazing. I go, dude, my brother Lou got caught for selling MDMA to a cop. This is a stoner says. He goes, let me ask you a question, man. <laughs> was the cop undercover? Yeah, dude. <laughs> How dumb do you think my brother is as a drug dealer? Think about that, that's an ambitious drug dealer. Who wants to sell that badly? Just walks up to a cop in full uniform like, hey man, I know you're working, but uh, do you like to party or? Oh, what about your horse? I've got some special K for your horsey, sir. Oh man, yeah, my family's interesting. I got a dad, my dad, born and raised in Italy, moved to North America when he was 40, had me at 50. I had an old immigrant dad growing up. Here's the thing about old immigrant dads, especially the European ones, they don't care how they dress. My dad could care less how he looked. I'll never forget, my dad took me to my first parent-teacher meeting wearing a bucket cap, a knitted sweater, cargo shorts, dress socks, dress shoes. <laughs> And before we talked to my teacher, he looked at me and went, hey, don't embarrass me. I'm like, what? <laughs> Is that possible, Papa? <laughs> my mom's interesting, too. My mom's 68. Here's the thing about all our parents. Anybody approaching the age of 70, you'll notice this. The filter's gone. <laughs> they don't care anymore. They say whatever's on their mind. They don't care if anyone's in front of them, either. It was me, my two brothers, and my mom. We're having a meal in a restaurant. It's busy. Not talking, we're just having a meal. And out of nowhere, my mom pointed at me between my two brothers and went, Eddie, did you know you're the only one that's circumcised? <laughs> I don't know what to do. I looked at my brothers and went, wow, what a weird way to find out <laughs> that I'm her favorite. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look who's got the best penis in the house. Didn't make the cut, hey boys? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a penis pun. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, well, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Something about people that hit a certain age that they say whatever's on their mind. I don't know what it is. You ever have somebody who's 80 years old flirt with you, playfully flirt with you? I know their intentions aren't anything bad, but it always makes me feel weird. I had an 80-year-old woman one time pinch my cheek after a show and, ah, oh, aren't you a hot little jalapeno? <laughs> I got nervous. I don't know what to say back. I went, well, aren't you a warm bowl of oatmeal? <laughs> she goes, you like oatmeal, huh? When it's hot. <laughs> We're all aging, we're all getting older. No one makes you feel older than someone who's young, right? That's the thing though, I once went on a date with someone that was a little younger than me, right? She asked me my age, I threw a little curveball. I go, I was born 1981. She does the math and goes, oh my God, you're like the last millennial. <laughs> Which sounds more like an amazing movie, <laughs> the last millennial. Just some 38 old guy wandering Coachella holding an iPod shuffle. <laughs> Does anyone have a cord for this? Where can I sit? Some brawless 20 year olds are like, whose dad is that? <laughs> Dude, I, I cannot talk to anybody who's a teen. The man, they make you feel so, you know what it is? They make you feel old and they make you feel like you're not cool at all. I don't know what it is. They just make you feel uncool. 
there's a kid in the front row of a show one time. I go, how old are you, dude? He goes, I'm 16. I go, you don't even know what a landline is. He goes, well, what's that? <laughs> so this is what I told him. Well, that's how you do cocaine off the ground. <laughs> Then this kid leans back and goes, I've done that. I'm like, yeah. You are cooler than me. Can we get out of here? I'm like, eh, I got enough friends. <laughs> That's the thing with drugs, you know. Any drug people here? Anybody like to do drugs here? Okay. <laughs> I didn't ask if there are any dealers, too. <laughs> yeah, is there any potential sales here? <laughs> You can tell someone's financial situation, not by the drugs they do, but how they do them, you know? If you see a guy doing cocaine with a rolled up $100 bill, like, that guy's probably doing well. If you see a guy doing cocaine with a rolled up Subway coupon, like, that guy probably works there, <laughs> He's a sandwich artist, he needs to be inspired. I <laughs> are, we, uh, are we drinking tonight, guys? Are we drinking tonight? What is this, like a Mormon Groupon? Is everybody okay? <laughs> Another water, sir. <laughs> a lot of swearing in this show. <laughs> Every human being is a little different when they drink, obviously. I'm one of these guys. I disappear when I get drunk, you know? And I'll do this. At the end of the night, I'll just run home for no reason. <laughs> Every group of buddies has a friend that just disappears and runs home. I'm that guy. This is how you know. This is the barometer. This is how you know you're too drunk to run home. I'm running home. I saw, kill, I saw like a cop in a speed trap. I started to slow down. <laughs> it wasn't going to pull me over. Like, you been drinking? Yeah. Give me your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I like to uh, people watch sometimes too. That's the best thing. If you're a designated driver, you like people watching. That's what I do. I like watching people, especially guys, leave their table to go to the bathroom. Because certain pubs or bars, they'll theme their bathroom. Instead of male or female, like animals, so like buck or doe, or fox or vixen. And I love watching hammered guys. Just stand there and be like. <laughs> Honey, what the hell am I? <laughs> I once had to go to use this uh, bathroom in a country western bar off the highway. It said a male or female. It said standing or sitting. <laughs> and I was confused because I had to take a dump. I was like, I can't do it standing up. What am I, a horse? I gotta ruin my little pantaloons. Dude, if I owned a bar, I put stuff in those doors, don't even relate to gender. Just to screw around with the patrons. Guys are like, honey, am I a frog or a waffle iron? <laughs> All right, I'm a waffle iron. <laughs> Groups of friends are the best to watch. This is what I notice. Women help each other out. Guys don't give a crap about each other. <laughs> I'm telling you, if a woman runs out of here puking, what do her friends do? They run after, they help her out. They hold her hair while she's puking, and they'll pet her and be like, it's okay, it's okay. You're still pretty, it's okay. <laughs> it's just carbs, let it out. That wedding next week, this is good. <laughs> Frere Jacques. Let's calm her down. Guys don't care about each other at all. Dude, if I run out of your puking, my friends look at me like, oh my God, he's puking. Quick, put your crotch on his face, take a picture. <laughs> what an idiot. great getting drunk with your loved one or girlfriend or whatever, you know? That's the best. Because sometimes your girlfriend, when she gets really hammered, she'll whisper stuff in your ear you don't usually hear. My girlfriend whispered in my ear when she was really drunk one time. She goes, Eddie. I go, yeah. She goes, I'm so hammered. I go, okay. And then she goes, ah, treat me like a whore tonight. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. I got to find an ATM. <laughs> No, no, take advantage of me. Okay, cool. Can I borrow 50 bucks? 
Let's find that ATM, huh? Try to try to be healthy as much as you can. Anybody like to go to the gym here? Any gym people here? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, sloth night? <laughs> Where's my food tube? <laughs> I get intimidated at the gym because there's guys at the gym who take it way too seriously. <laughs> You know the guys I'm talking about, like headband, Everlast belt. They walk around like they're holding invisible luggage all the time. Like, that guy's got baggage, but I can't see it. It's in his heart. He's got that compensating body. You know those guys, they're too intense, they make sounds at machines they shouldn't. I'm working out, I'll hear some guy go, I look over, he's at a water fountain. I'm like, what the? <laughs> Sip and move, man. <laughs> I'm an easygoing guy. I'm not that uptight at all. I'm not uptight at all. I hate uptight people, especially people who are uptight about things that are natural in nature. You know, like one time I was in this park just walking through, and I saw a woman breastfeeding her baby. And a lot of people in America think, ooh, that's lewd and gross. Why? That's a beautiful moment between a mother, her child, and me. <laughs> Some guy's like, why are you looking? <laughs> why aren't they taping? <laughs> I look with envy. I'm not a pervert. I look with envy because I was never breastfed as a kid. And looking at me, I know a lot of you are looking at me thinking, is that possible, Edmundo? You're five foot seven with Fisher Price legs. Are you not sure? <laughs> I told a buddy I was never breastfed. And this guy has knows nothing about biology or anything at all. I go, dude, I was never breastfed as a kid. He goes, oh my God, what did you eat? Formula, dude. For my mom's not a monster. <laughs> what kind of tale do you want me to say? Like, whatever I could find in the couch. <laughs> Chips, pretzels, whatever. <laughs> uh, thank you, lady. <laughs> That's my favorite laugh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I brought extra underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I live, uh, live in Los Angeles now. Here's the thing, okay? People there are kind of kooky, kind of weird. You see people down there making weird life choices when it comes to transportation, you know? Like I saw a woman on an electric scooter, all right? No helmet and pregnant. I was like, wow, this chick really hates protection. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Cop drives next to her, pull out. I wish he did. <laughs> I got interesting friends down there in Los Angeles. I got one buddy, tall dude, 6'8", tall guy. He told me that he hooked up with a woman that was 6'4". That's a lot of human being in a bed, you know what I mean? That's almost too much people to even be in a bed. What did that even look like? Just two ladders falling down the stairs? I go, how was it? He goes, oh, we did it doggy style. Like, Don't you mean Great Dane style? <laughs> You're a different doggy, dude. <laughs> I got in a, in a car accident recently down there in West Hollywood, California. I got my first LA car accident. And that's an accident that is specific to their 
unlike anywhere else you can find anywhere else in the world. I'm sitting in traffic, not moving. A car hit a car, and that car hit me. Stinks, right? Dude, I get out of the car. The person hit me, tall, beautiful, blue-eyed Swedish man, all right? The person hit him, tall, beautiful Latin American woman, and all I can think is, wow, this is the only way. I could get either their phone numbers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm okay looking, but I'm not hot enough to be in this accident, you know what I mean? <laughs> Cop shows up, what are you doing here? <laughs> Bro, I'm just happy to be involved, all right? <laughs> Let's switch gears a little bit. You guys want to talk about sex? Want to do that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do sense some trepidation there. Like, ooh, you know? I did approach you like a creepy substitute teacher. Like, you guys want to talk about sex, huh? <laughs> Screw science. Want to see my drawings? Oh. <laughs> Sir, no. I actually don't have a lot of life experience. I actually lost my virginity late late last night, and uh, <laughs> yeah. she was a real doll. Mm, she was a real doll. Uh, she's actually African, a mannequin, and uh, <laughs> people stare at us. Well, they're racist, you know? <laughs> Some people are very direct with it, and it throws me off, you know? Like one time, I went on a date with this woman, and halfway through the date, I don't even know her. She goes, just so you know, I go, what? When it comes to sex, I need to be the boss. That sounds great, but how am I supposed to respond to that? Like, that's great. When it comes to sex, I just want to be an employee. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just want to be hired, really. Um, my performance, I'm going to punch in, punch out, punch in, punch out. I'm also going to arrive early. Uh, <laughs> thank you. The guys that are clapping also have a problem. <laughs> Keep fighting the fight, brother. <laughs> Never late, always early. <laughs> first dates are interesting, right? You gotta be a good guy on a first date. Women appreciate a chivalrous man, you know, drops him off on the first date, drives him home, right, ladies? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Four chicks, the rest of you are like, I don't care. <laughs> Just pay for the Denny's and don't look at me. <laughs> what am I, the queen? <laughs> I'm a simple gal. <laughs> Here's the thing, every guy wants to be invited back to a woman's place on a first date. Women want that too, but they're cryptic about it. Women will be like, wanna, wanna come upstairs for a glass of wine or come upstairs for a cup of coffee? We're guys, we'll come upstairs no matter what you say. <laughs> My day could look me dead in the eye and be like, wanna go upstairs and huff some gasoline? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to huff some gasoline. I brought my own rag, let's do this. It's diesel, I'm fancy. <laughs> I am in a relationship now. Anybody in a relationship now? At all? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody in a happy relationship? <laughs> This is our night out. <laughs> Take me to dinner. They got wings there. <laughs> I, you know, I hated being single because sometimes you go on these dates and someone, you, you meet somebody and what happens, they'll say things on their mind that you don't want to know, things you don't need to hear. I once went a date with this woman off a dating app Went to a Mexican restaurant, great. She orders a burrito, I order the enchiladas, the waiter walks away. Then this woman, I don't even know her. She looks at me and goes, ah, this is a huge mistake. I went, why? Swear to God, she goes, ugh, this is gonna be my fourth burrito today. <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, I'm pretty sure that does even happen in Mexico. <laughs> Think about that. Who's three burritos deep? He goes, you know what? I should just top myself off. <laughs> Let's just ruin tomorrow. Make it a toilet weekend. <laughs> Why would you tell me this information? I'm not going to roll with it. I'm not that desperate. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, you tell me you have two pounds of black beans in you? <laughs> not about you, but let's find a room with no windows and make out. 
let's just fart the night away. My little butt trumpet. <laughs> hey, you know, I've done it too. I've screwed up too on a first date. I have. Every guy in this room thinks they're clever on a first date, but you actually can be really creepy very quickly. Let me know what I'm talking about. The guy thinks he's funny and you realize, oh no, he's a weirdo, you know? <laughs> happened to me, I was on a date one time, a woman showed up late, I go, what happened? I never met her before. She goes, oh, sorry, I was taking a nap. I go, that's fine. This is what she said. Honestly, I love sleeping. I could just sleep forever. <laughs> Guys, what you're supposed to say is, oh, nice. But instead I went, don't worry, <laughs> you will one day. <laughs> I go, there's no date number two, is there? She's like, no, nah, well, sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like being in a relationship. Being in a relationship is great. I'm learning new things every day about women. I'm learning that women talk about the relationship way more than men do. Guys keep that card close to the vest. Women talk about it. My girlfriend came up to me recently and was like, hey, I just told my mom you finally said I love you. I was like, wow, that reminds me. I should tell my mom that I have a girlfriend. <laughs> She likes to argue with me via text. Oh, isn't that the worst, guys? You ever, get, you ever with somebody that loves to give you that huge, long text message? Just looking at that gives me so much anxiety. I'm not gonna lie to you, she doesn't know this, but I treat those like an iTunes contract. I, I scroll to the bottom, write agree and accept, and I walk away from the phone. <laughs> There's a couple of guys who are like, that's a good idea. I met her parents for the first time. It's a big moment, it's a big moment. Here's the deal, all right? She works for a tech firm, doing very well for herself. She has a pension, benefits, six figures, doing great. Met her dad, blue collar guy, sits me down and goes, so son, huh, what's your plan for retirement? I go, sir, I'm a stand-up comedian. <laughs> it's called your daughter. Uh, <laughs> and eventually your house. Uh, <laughs> Her family hates that joke, but I kind of like it. <laughs> you learn new things every day in a relationship. Guys, listen to your lady or listen to your partner. You realize how dumb of a human being you are when you're with somebody. My vocabulary is expanding. For instance, we went to a restaurant, I go, babe, what do you feel like eating? She looked at the menu, then looked at me and went, mm, I'm in the mood for some broccolini. I'll be honest with people, I'm a dumb guy. I know that was a word. I thought that was her nickname for broccoli. <laughs> I thought she was being cute. I was like, oh my God, that's what you call it? That's adorable. Huh. Maybe I'll get a hamburgerino. <laughs> Maybe some ice creamies after. <laughs> Tried to get laid that night. Ooh, denied -o. Uh <laughs> Did you know this? Broccolini, you've all seen it on the menu. It's a man-made vegetable, did you know that? It's a genetically modified splice between asparagus and broccoli. It was made in the lab in 1993, right in Los Angeles, which kind of makes sense, because only in LA would someone look at broccoli and be like, mm, you should be taller and thinner. <laughs> Maybe change your name, sound more ethnic. Ooh, you'll be big in the restaurants. <laughs> you guys have been so much fun. Thank you so much for making this recording great. Have a great night, everybody.